In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about projection vectors. The first concept for projection vectors is this idea of a scalar projection. So what we want to do here is we want to take vector A and we want to find the scalar projection of it onto vector B. The term scalar means a real number. And what we want to do is we want to project that vector A onto vector B, which means that by doing so, it would be a 90 degree angle going up here and we want to take vector A and we want to project that onto vector B and by doing so we know that this length here which would be the projection of A onto B is going to be the magnitude of A cos of theta. Notice here this is our vector A. You know by definition this would be the magnitude of A cos theta and this would be the magnitude of A sine theta. So therefore the scalar projection of vector A onto vector B is magnitude of a cos theta. A similar idea can be done for obtuse angles. Suppose we want to calculate the scalar projection of a onto b in this case. Well, in this case here, we drop this down, and now we're interested in calculating this length here, the projection of a onto b. So the angle inside of here will be 180 minus theta. By definition, this length here, if this is vector a, this length here will be the magnitude of a cos of 180 minus theta, but as we know, the cos of 180 minus theta is equal to the cos of theta. So the form is unchanged. For an angle which is acute, the scalar projection of a onto b is the same as the scalar projection of a onto b for angles which are obtuse. Furthermore, notice this operation is independent of the length of the vector. If my vector b was smaller, the projection of a onto b would still be magnitude of a cos theta, and if my vector b was much, much longer, then the projection of a onto b would still be the magnitude of a cos theta. Therefore, we have the result that the scalar projection of a onto b is independent of the length of vector b. Now suppose we want to calculate the projection of b onto a. Well, the projection of vector b onto vector a would again create a right angle here. My angle theta is still the angle between vectors a and b. Recall, we had defined this to be vector a this to be vector b, and now by definition, this would be the magnitude of b cos of theta. Notice in general that the magnitude of a cos theta is not equal to the magnitude of b cos theta unless these magnitudes are equal. In other words, the scalar projection of a onto b and the scalar projection of b onto a in general are not equal. Let's take a look at some notation so that we can express the scalar projection easier. Now, if we want to denote the scalar projection of a onto b, we have the following notation. PROJ stands for projection, subscript, the vector a, and vector b is viewed as the input. We should view the projection using vector a as your function, and it is acting on, in this case, vector b. So to express the projection of a onto b, it is denoted in this way. However, we want the scalar projection so scalar becomes a magnitude, and in which case we're going to take the magnitude of that vector. Likewise, we can do this for the projection of b onto a. To denote the scalar projection of b onto a, consider the following vector. Projection, subscript b, acting on a. And again, this can be viewed as a function. So this would be the projection of vector b acting on vector a. And again, like we said, we want to talk about scalar. So we're going to put magnitude symbols on the outside of this function. Now we're talking about the length of that vector. So using this notation here, it's an easier way to express the scalar projection of a vector onto some other vector. And again, by adding that magnitude symbol, now you're talking about the scalar projection. We have yet to actually talk about the projection vector itself, only the scalar projection. Let's take a look at that. Going back to our diagram here on the projection of a onto b, notice that the length of this projection, that was our scalar projection of a onto b, we had defined as the magnitude of a cos of theta. Now, take a look over here. We know that a dot b is magnitude of a, magnitude of b, cos of theta. Therefore, isolating for the magnitude of a cos of theta, we would have the magnitude of a cos of theta is equal to a dot b over the magnitude of b. Therefore, we have the scalar projection of a onto b 
is equal to a dot b over the magnitude of b. Observe that this is a length, and this is the length of this vector here. Therefore, if I take vector b and we reduce it down to being a unit vector, how do I express b as a unit vector? Well, vector b expressed as a unit vector, we could rewrite vector b, which a unit vectors are denoted with a hat symbol on the top here, b hat. So vector b written as a unit vector, 1 over the magnitude of b times vector b. And recall we had discussed this earlier. By doing so, we now have expressed vector b as a unit vector. So now that we have vector b written as a unit vector here, we only need to multiply by the length of this line segment to stretch that vector out so that vector is the ex exact length of magnitude of a cos b. Therefore, the projection of vector a onto vector b can be expressed as a dot b over the magnitude of b times b hat, which is equal to a dot b over magnitude of b times 1 over the magnitude of b times vector b. Simplifying, we get a dot b over magnitude of b squared times vector b. Notice here that what we've done is we've taken vector b and expressed it in terms of a unit vector, so it would have a length of 1. By doing that, we just multiply vector b by 1 over its magnitude. That will force vector b to be a unit vector. We then multiply that unit vector by the length of the scalar projection of a onto b, which can be expressed as a dot b over magnitude of b. Multiplying that scalar projection by our unit vector will ensure that the projection of a onto b is exactly the length of this line segment. So therefore, we have the projection of a onto b is equal to a dot b over magnitude of b squared times vector b. Let's take a look at some examples. So for our first example here, we want to find the projection of a onto b. This is an R2, and we want to find that scalar projection as well. So let's take a look. Recall, the projection of a onto b is denoted by this here. Uh, that means we have to find a dot b and magnitude of b. Well, a dot b is going to equal 16 minus 3 is 13. Magnitude of b in this case is going to be the square root of 4 squared plus negative 1 quantity squared, which is root 17. Therefore, the projection of a onto b is going to be a dot b, which is 13, over the magnitude of b squared, which is 17, times vector b. So therefore, the projection of a onto b is 13 over 17 times vector b. Notice here that calculating the projection of a onto b with its magnitude symbol, now we're looking for the scalar projection, so just the length of the vector. Well, the scalar projection of a onto b, in this case here, is going to be a dot b over magnitude of just b, which is 13 over the root of 17. Notice in general that the projection of a onto b for this question is really just the scalar projection of a onto b times our unit vector b hat. In our last example here, we just want to take a look at R3. So we're given two vectors here, A and B, and we want to find the projection of A onto B in R3 here. So to do this, we know that the projection of A onto B is going to equal A dot B over the magnitude of B squared times our vector B. Well, A dot B is going to equal here 0 plus 2 plus 6, which will be 8. The magnitude of b will be the square root of 0 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 2 squared. And therefore, the magnitude of b squared is going to equal 5 here. Summing this in, we get 8 fifths times vector b. Well, vector b is 0, 1, negative 2. And therefore, the projection of a onto b is 0, 8 fifths, negative 16 over 5. That concludes today's lesson on projection vectors. Thank you.